Though the Persona series has been quite successful, hasn't it? I mean, we're on our sixth mainline game now, and ever since Persona 4, the series has been the biggest JRPG, like, ever. The only bigger one might be Bakugan, but, you know, they have trading cards. So, since we have the 25th anniversary of the series coming up next year, I thought, why not take a little look at the series over the years and just examine its extremely interesting history. Alright, so it all started with Megami Ibon Roku Persona, releasing on the PlayStation 1. And let's be real here, we all know that quite a large portion of the fanbase prefers the old Sona over new Sona, but I'm not one of them, so let's just skip over them real quick. Basically, Persona 1, 2 and 2.5 released on the PlayStation and were not that successful. At least in the times shortly after release where it mattered most. This actually caused Atlas to go bankrupt in 2005, during the time that they were working on Persona 3 about which we sadly barely know anything. We have some screenshots and videos from the game in development, but it looks quite different from the actual Persona 3 that we ended up getting. It looks quite similar to how Persona 4 and 5 are nowadays, with honestly way more interesting looking dungeon crawling, unlike the one we actually got, which is more reminiscent of Persona 1 and 2. Nevertheless, Persona 3 still is an important milestone, as it's somewhat like a bridge between 2 and 4. It's not quite either, but still, it's a good game. So around this time, Atlas was bought up by Nintendo, saving them from going bankrupt. This also caused Persona 3 to be delayed to around 2009, releasing on the 5th of March 2009, exclusively on the Nintendo Wii. It's actually one of the only Wii games to feature motion control, which really makes it stand out right next to the only other game on the Wii with motion controls, which is a little game called Fortnite Save the World. It's kind of an odd game. Uh, I don't think many people played it. Uh, I remember I played it as a kid. If you remember playing it, leave a comment. And it's like, I can't be the only one remembering this game, right? So when Persona 3 came out, the fan base was actually quite divided. Some people really liked the added confidant system in which you could hang out with your teammates in between battles, while others lamented that it took away from the dungeon crawling. In any case, after 3 comes 4. Persona 4 for Nintendo DS and Nintendo Wii. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what made them release this game on the DS. It's kind of weird. Like, Persona 4 is a really good game and all on the Wii, but on the DS it's a completely different game. Unlike in Persona 4 Wii, where you play as the investigation team trying to uncover a murder mystery, which is actually kind of crazy that that was allowed on the Wii. In DS, you play as a girl named Marie, and there's only one dungeon, and at the end you just wrote a bunch of letters. It's, it's really weird. Sadly, I can't show you any gameplay because my DS capture card is broken, so you know, but it's probably better that way, that game, that game stinks. Anyways, Persona 4, for Wii, was received generally really well. It finally completed what 3 had started and became a full-on social sim with only minor dungeon crawling. During the day, you went and hung out with your friends and built bonds with them, but at night you investigated clues towards a killer that is hiding in your town. And you do this by going into TV worlds, where the victims of the killer leave behind their last memories and you have to piece them together to get a clue to who the killer is. It was really good and spoiler, but the game is 8 years old now, the plot twist that the killer was actually your sister was really really good. If you played the game, you probably, like me, assumed that the clumsy detective Adachi would be behind it. But nope, it was actually Nanako. Ah, I can still remember how hard I screamed when that scene played. Good times. Also, fun fact. The Wii version had this exclusive Persona 4 themed Wiimote included. It's pretty cool, right? So, and the final main entry we got just two years ago is actually Persona 5. Long awaited, but not really considering it released just six years after Persona 4. It's out on Nintendo Wii U, the successor to the Wii, <laughs> even more successful than the Wii. And, you know, I would love to talk about it, but Nintendo has a really strict policy on YouTubers where I can only really show you gameplay and really mention it once the game has had a successor, so uh, I, I, I can't really talk about it, can I? Well, there is a rumor that next year, when the Nintendo NX releases, there will be an enhanced port of Persona 5. Speaking of ports, let's talk about all the weird little ports and spin-offs, since this series sure has a lot. So first up, we got Persona 3DS. It's a semi-remake of Persona 3 for the 3DS. It actually is really close to the original Persona 3 we lost in 2005, featuring a different story and different characters, and only one dungeon called Tartarus. Persona Q and Persona Q2. These are mobile games, 
for your phone. And they seem interesting, but the gacha is so aggressive that I really never had any interest in it. But the cast of Persona 3, 4, 5 and 3D meet here. So that's cool, I guess. Persona 5 Racing. A China exclusive mobile racing game with gacha in the style of Garfield Kart, featuring the characters from Persona 5. Sounds interesting. Well, I hope it releases in the West, because I would love to see a catchy riding in a card. And lastly, we have probably the strangest of all, Persona 5 Strikers and Tactica on the Wii phone. One of them is a hack and slash beat em up and the other is a 4x grand strategy game like Hearts Fire and 5. I don't own a Wii phone, so I never played them. From what I could see of them, the gameplay looks a little crunchy, but you know, the portability probably makes up for it. And that's it. All the games of the Ibon Roku Persona series. I thought it'd be fun to do a little history lesson. If you like this type of content, let me know what you think. Well, with that, I've been a catchy 4 and thanks for watching. Oh,